Welcome to the story of John D. Rockefeller, a man who rose from humble beginnings to become the richest person in the world. With a net worth of over 400 billion in today's dollars, Rockefeller's life is a testament to the American dream. But how did he amass such incredible wealth? Was he simply a savvy businessman, or was there more to his success? And what was life like for the people around him? Join us as we delve into the life and legacy of John D. Rockefeller, a man who changed the oil industry forever and left a lasting impact on American society. Was he a ruthless tycoon or a philanthropic visionary? And what lessons can we learn from his life and work today? Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and get ready to discover the story of John D. Rockefeller, the richest person in the world. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get more amazing content. Let's get into it. Who is John D. Rockefeller? On July 8, 1839, in Richford, New York, John Davison Rockefeller was born. His father was a traveling salesman. The future oil tycoon was a hard worker even as a young boy, making money by rearing turkeys, selling candies, and working odd tasks for neighbors. Rockefeller was the eldest son and second of six children. He relocated to Morovia, New York, with his family before moving to Oswego, New York in 1851, where he enrolled in Oswego Academy. In 1853, the family moved to Strongsville, a community close to Cleveland, Ohio. Six years later, after enrolling in and later leaving Cleveland Central High School, taking one business course at Folsom Mercantile College, and working as a bookkeeper, Rockefeller launched his first company, a commission-based enterprise that dealt in hay, grain, meats, and other products. He believed September 26 to be such a momentous day because it marked the beginning of his career and his entry into the corporate world that, as an adult, he would celebrate this employment day every year. Let's continue. Rockefeller wed Laura Celestia Setti Spellman, an Ohio native whose father was a successful businessman, politician, and underground railroad abolitionist in 1864. The Rockefellers went on to have five children, John D. Rockefeller Jr., Edith Rockefeller McCormick, Edith Rockefeller Strong, Alter Rockefeller Prentice, and Alice Rockefeller, who passed away at the age of 13 months. What business did Rockefeller go into, and how did he make so much money? Rockefeller and a colleague started their own commission business in 1859. That same year, America's first oil well was drilled in Titusville, Pennsylvania. So Rockefeller and several associates invested in a Cleveland refinery in 1863 to get a piece of that lucrative new oil business. Rockefeller offered to buy out some of his partners and take over the refinery, which had grown to be the biggest in Cleveland. Every time one of those refineries refused to sell him their oil, he simply started selling oil at a loss to draw customers away from them and drive out the smaller businesses. By acquiring rivals, undercutting rivals, and finding other ways to reduce expenses, the standard oil firm was able to continue expanding over the entire nation. As they expanded, their negotiation strength increased, allowing them to demand better terms, rates, and discounts on everything. Along with his reputation for unscrupulous dealings, John D. Rockefeller held 90% of the world's oil refining sector by the 1870s thanks to a combination of these reasons. The owners of the oil refineries he purchased were also hired as a board of trustees, which meant that all of the most knowledgeable oil professionals were employed by a single super corporation, with Rockefeller as its head. The overall value of his business, according to some estimates, would have been close to a trillion dollars today if he had owned all of his 20,000 oil wells and employed more than 100,000 people. Together with Henry Flagler, his younger brother William, and several other men, Rockefeller founded the Standard Oil Company of Ohio in 1870. By acquiring competing refineries and creating businesses for the distribution and marketing of his goods around the world, Standard Oil was able to establish a monopoly in the oil sector. These different businesses were merged into the Standard Oil Trust in 1882, which would go on to control around 90% of the nation's pipelines and refineries. Standard Oil built its oil barrels and hired scientists to find new uses for petroleum byproducts to take advantage of economies of scale. Rockefeller was the target of muckraking journalists, reform politicians, and other people who saw him as a symbol of corporate greed and disapproved of the strategies he used to build his empire. 
He was accused of stifling competition, amassing wealth via railroad rebates, paying individuals to spy on competitive businesses, making secret deals, pressuring rivals to join the Standard Oil Company under fear of being put out of business, and other things. The Sherman Antitrust Act, the first piece of legislation to forbid antitrusts and alliances that restricted trade, was approved by the American Congress in 1890. The Standard Oil Trust was dissolved by the Ohio Supreme Court two years later, but the trust companies quickly joined Standard Oil of New Jersey, which served as a holding corporation. Standard Oil of New Jersey was ordered to dissolve in 1911 after the Supreme Court determined it had violated antitrust rules following years of litigation. It was broken up into more than 30 individual companies. In the middle of the 1890s, Rockefeller took a break from managing Standard Oil's daily operations. Through the Rockefeller Foundation, Rockefeller contributed more than $500 million to a variety of charitable causes, in part inspired by fellow Gilded Age tycoon Andrew Carnegie, who amassed a sizable fortune in the steel industry before turning philanthropist and giving away the majority of his wealth. He supported the creation of the University of Chicago and the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research, now Rockefeller University. As a passionate Baptist, Rockefeller focused more and more on charities and benevolence in the 1890s. From 1897, he gave his entire concentration to philanthropy. He supported the University of Chicago's creation in 1892, and by the time of his death from a heart attack in 1937, just a few months before he turned 98, he had donated about $35 million to the institution. Rockefeller possessed several homes, including one in New York City, one in Lakewood, New Jersey, and one on 3,000 acres close to Tarrytown, New York, called Keat, which is Old Dutch for Lookout. In Cleveland's Lakeview Cemetery, he was laid to rest. He founded significant philanthropic organizations with his son, John D. Rockefeller Jr., including the General Education Board in 1902, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research in New York City, 1901-1913. During his lifetime, Rockefeller donated more than $500 million to charitable causes. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of John D. Rockefeller's life and legacy. From his humble beginnings to his rise to fame and fortune, Rockefeller's story serves as an inspiration to those who strive for success. His impact on the world of business and philanthropy will continue to be felt for generations to come. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning. If you love this video, please make sure to like and drop a comment to let us know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye!